Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 19th, and it's a cold day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's, uh, I think it's 26 degrees right now, with the wind it's 16. It was 60 yesterday. I, I didn't mind it so much when it was warm in the winter, but I don't want it to be cold as we're getting closer to spring. But such is life. Ah, so it's been, uh, been a great weekend so far, Sunday morning, really, really enjoying things. Got a couple of things I wanted to talk about today, but I am enjoying some War Horse Ready Rubbed. And this is in my uh, cane rod pipes number zero, the pipe-like object. And uh, yeah, good stuff. I opened this on Friday night during a live stream. We did a, a bit of a St. Patrick's Day theme sort of thing since Friday was St. Patrick's Day. And uh, War Horse was originally an Irish blend. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but this is good. If you haven't had it, now I was told, I haven't checked this, so maybe this is uh, incorrect, but I was told during a live stream that you can no longer get the ready room. And that's a shame. I have, I think this was one of five tins I have in, in the cellar, so I'm okay, but the bar is still is available, which is a plug. Uh, which is fine, you know, a lot of people like the plug anyway. It's odd that they got rid of the ready rope though. Anyway. Uh, the blend is, uh, let's see, Virginia, Burley, Perique, and Darkfire. Darkfire, Kentucky. And it's got a topping. The topping is, some people say it's, it's anise or anisette. I've never gotten that. I think it's more closer to something like a Tonkin, but um, I, I've described it in the past as a Play-Doh-like uh, flavor. But it's very light, and honestly, in this stuff, which is, I should have looked at this earlier, 2016. So this has been around for a while. I'm not detecting that topping hardly at all. Uh, I mean, if I really search for it, it's there. but. Uh, but it's a very nice, very rich blend. You get a lot of flavor out of it, a lot of, uh, you know, depth. And just, just enough perique to keep it interesting. So it's good stuff. But if you haven't tried War Horse Ready Rubbed, you might not be able to, but... Check out the Warhorse Bar. I haven't had that yet, but I'm going to get some uh, next time I order because I'm curious. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Warhorse, good stuff. So, I'm going to talk about doorknobs, but <laughs> before I get the doorknobs, I had almost couldn't make this video because I had a bit of a computer adventure yesterday. Um, I've, I've talked about this before, but I, my computer is... Uh, System76 Linux machine. I, I, I really like Linux. Um, the reason I like Linux is it's you can do anything with it, so it's not locked down like, like uh, the Mac systems are. And it's not a monster, out of control, massive, uh, oh, bloated, there's the word I was looking for, bloated operating system like Windows. Uh, and it works. It just works. It's so solid. I, I very rarely, I've probably, I've had this computer about eight years now. And I think what I'm going to describe to you is the second problem I've had with this in eight years. So it's, it's just a good solid operating system, regularly updates, uh, open source means that, you know, viruses just don't happen. And if anything does happen, it gets picked up immediately by the open source community and fixed. Uh, and, and it's continually updating. So I'm, I'm very happy with Linux. I, I highly recommend Linux. If, you, if you're searching for something better than uh, the crap they put on your computer. Pardon my French. So anyway, and, and by the way, I'm running Ubuntu. Um, so 
Yesterday, I was I, I had less disk space than I thought I should. I've got a 500 gigabyte drive on the thing, and it was you know fuller than I thought it should be. So I got the bright idea of running this piece of software that goes and finds you know lost, broken sectors and things like that, and kind of cleans up the disk. Uh, and I won't mention the software because it did something bad. Uh, so it's going along doing this and I went off to do something and I came back to it and it just locked up. It just completely froze it. And so I rebooted the computer because I didn't know what else to do. And I just got a black screen. I could not get the darn thing to boot. Tried repeatedly, eventually got it to boot into a um, uh, recovery mode sort of thing. Was able to drop out to a, a root uh, terminal <laughs> and then had to figure out what the heck was wrong and I had no idea you know I just knew it wouldn't boot and eventually I figured out that there was zero disk space I mean zero it was gone <laughs> it was like there wasn't a, a so anything you asked the computer to do it had a lot of difficulty doing because you know write swap files and stuff to the disk turns out that this piece of software it apparently picks up a section of uh, the disk and then makes a copy of it and then rewrites it back to its original place or something like that. Anyway, it filled up the darn disk with these temporary files and I had to go hunting for the temporary files because they're not all in one place and it took me hours to, to sort this out and you know I was able to sort it out but um, yeah it was fun. <laughs> It was actually a lot of fun, and uh, I, I like I like doing this because to me, at the end, you know, if, if this was a Windows or a Mac machine, I I'm sorry, I would just have no ability to to deal with it. I would have just had to taken it to you know some place and said, "Eh, fix this." But I knew that I knew one of two things were were possible: either a I had completely fried the system, or the system had just and I mean hardware wise. And I needed a new laptop, or B, I could fix it. And uh, turned out the option was B, so I'm happy about that. Anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. Um, doorknobs. So, we have a garage. It's a one car garage, it's uh, you know, not insulated, bare rafters, that kind of stuff. And we've lived in this house for over 20 years. We moved here in 2000. And there's a door between the house and the garage that, you know, for a long time was just fine. And then one day about I mean, maybe 10 years ago, it opened itself. It just popped open. I'm talking about an interior door, not a not a... You know, not something that's supposed to work by itself. The first time it happened, I said, the house is haunted, let's move. Um, it seems to be weather related. It seems like if it's cold, and particularly if it's windy, because uh, the, the garage is not well insulated, and I think the pressure change occurs in the garage, it'll pop open, and it swings inward. So, okay, it's rare that it happens, but a couple of times now, this has happened, you know, you pull into the driveway, you open the garage door, because I've got no hope of fitting a car in this garage. My wife has it filled with junk. So you open the garage door, and uh, as you're getting your stuff, you realize that the dogs have walked out to greet you. And this is bad, because we use the garage kind of like an airlock, <laughs> like a dog airlock. The dogs stay in the house, we go out. So we close the, that inner door, they're stuck, now we can open up the garage door and leave. Um, now, the dogs are good, you know, you just have to say, hey, get back in the house. They turn around and go back in. They listen, and, and I'm not too worried about that, but I don't know what would happen if somebody was walking their dog, because they get excited, they want to play, you know. And my biggest fear is, what if somebody's walking their dog on the other side of the street, and they go bolting, and there's a car coming, you know. So, so this, this was something I had to fix. So after 10 years, I decided, well, maybe I'll fix this now. <laughs> The reason I didn't fix it right away was the problem seemed to be that the, the, the catch wasn't catching. I got, I got props. 
and you've all seen doors, so you know this stuff. This is the part that goes into a little mortise on the door frame. And this is the part that you probably recognize this end of it, which is the business end. This part is sitting in the door, and this moves in and out as you turn the knob. Okay? So the idea is that the sloped portion of this hits the curved bit of this, it pushes this in, and then it pops into that opening, and you can't open it unless you turn the knob. Really simple. So what I realized was this wasn't this wasn't extending into that hole. So what seemed apparent to me was that this piece was not set back far enough and this was somehow getting you know, hung up before it could drop it. So I finally got around to fixing it. I said, okay, I take this off. Took about an eighth of an inch off the inner edge of that mortise. Drilled out the holes where the screws go, filled them with dowels, glued, let the glue set, cut the dowels off flush, put this in place, redrilled new holes to shift this all back an eighth of an inch, and now it should work beautifully. And I went to close the door and the darn thing wouldn't engage at all. I said, okay, something, something's really odd here. So I started playing with it, you know, trying to adjust this a little bit and seeing if it would work. And then eventually I, I had this off and I just held it up to the lock in the door. And much to my surprise, <laughs> it doesn't fit. This opening is smaller than this thing. It doesn't fit. <laughs> the problem wasn't that the little catch was misaligned. The problem was that the little catch and the doorknob itself were mismatched. Uh, I didn't know they came in different sizes. I had no idea. Um, so <laughs> apparently they do. And what's weird is that if I'm remembering right, this is oversized compared to like every other doorknob I could find. So I wound up buying a new doorknob, which, you know, 20 bucks took me about 20 minutes to install it and problem solved. But <laughs> how the heck did these get to be different sizes? I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's as far in as that will go. And it's not enough for it to catch so that this won't just slip open. And that's why it was, that's why it was popping open all those years. Whoever owned this house before me found a mismatch plate and installed it apparently. Or, well no, the, no, they found a mismatch doorknob and installed it because the plate seems to be standard. Anyway, I don't know if there's differences between interior, exterior doors or something like that, but honestly, I, I went over to Home Depot when I, I took this thing with me and, you know, tried it against all different things. And this seems to be standard, but the, the lock seems to be different. Anyway, doorknobs are complicated. Who knew? Ah, uh, I do like this warhorse. It's, it's smooth and very rich. The folks do say it's it's got a high nicotine content. I don't know. Good stuff though. I prefer it to be a little more periky. And the other thing I, I like about it is it does have dark fire in it, but I can't really it's kind of like the topping. If I try, I can pull it out, but I don't like a lot of dark fire in a blend. A little bit's okay. This is really well blended. So last thing, um, probably going to regret doing this, but <laughs> I've been playing around with these uh, 
these uh, AI image generators. That's where the, the little bumper at the beginning, uh, which you might have noticed as the video started, uh, that's where that image comes from. And I just tried variations on, you know, draw a man fixing a doorknob, draw an old man fixing a doorknob, a, a dad fixing a doorknob, uh, and, you know, style of Rockwell and, and so on. And uh, that was the one that I was happy with. Uh, but some interesting things can happen when you when you play with these AI image generators. And I, I just have to show you this because I laughed at it for... <laughs> For a good, good 15 minutes this morning. Uh, my wife better come home soon because I'm starting to lose it, I think. So let me show you a couple of images, and, and I'm going to show you the one that I just do not understand. But anyway, uh, let's see. Hopefully these will come up in the right order. Yeah, so this is another option. So you, you saw the one at the beginning. This was from the same generator. Um, I didn't like this one because the guy just looks a little too paranoid to me. So... Uh, I went with the other one. The reason I went with the one, and you'll see it at the end uh, again, uh, I went with that because uh, it looked like he was actually fixing the doorknob. There was like a screwdriver type thing in his hand. Uh, this was one of the Rockwell attempts, and it's not too terrible. I mean, I don't know what's going on with that white thing sticking out of the back of his hand, and it looks like he's got some books at his knee or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, not too terrible, considering it was drawn by a computer. Uh, just didn't quite look good to me. Not, not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, so then I asked it to draw a 1950s dad fixing a doorknob. And this is what came up. I do not know what's going on here. I, 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 yeah. So, it can do some weird stuff. <laughs> I just really don't know what's going on there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. So, I've got Sunday stuff to do. What do I have to do today? I'm doing some laundry. Some household type stuff. Got the seed started for the garden. Save that for a future video, but I'm pretty happy about the, my seed selection. We'll see if anything grows, but always a challenge. gonna make some breakfast and I don't know maybe uh, it's too cold to go out but uh, goof around with the dogs a little bit in the house and uh, make them happy because I gotta leave them tomorrow gotta gotta be in work all day tomorrow so with that friends I will let you get off to enjoy your Sunday One more sip of coffee before I go to the valley below. I will let you get off and enjoy your Sunday. I hope you have a nice one and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.